Hey everyone, this is 9.5, Metric System and Dimensional Analysis. We're going to start by talking about the metric system, which is basically the system of measurement that most of the world uses except for us. Um, and they measure mass, length, and volume with three units. Mass is measured with grams, length is measured in meters, and volume is measured in liters. And then um, to use larger measurements of, say, like mass, for example, they just add on prefixes like decagram or hectogram or kilogram. And so you can see those prefixes down here. In fact, this is all you really need to have in order to convert inside the metric system. It's actually pretty easy. Um, let's say you have hectograms and you want to convert them to dec or centigrams. So you go to this chart and you say, okay, I have hectograms, I'm going to centigrams. So count, that's one, two, three, four to the right. And that means all you're going to do is take your decimal place, wherever it is in your hectograms, and move it four times to the right, and then you'll have centigrams. And the whole reason behind this is because our number system is a base 10 number system, and the way these prefixes work, they are all base 10 as well. So it converts over pretty easily. Alright, so page 485, we're going to convert on uh, number 1, 2.4 kiloliters to deciliters. So we have kiloliters, we're over here at kilo, and we want to go to deciliters, which is over here at deci. So we're going to go 1, 2, 3, 4 to the right. The number of times and the direction is important. All right, so we're going to take our 2.4 kiloliters, and we're going to take that decimal in the 2.4, and we're going to move it four times to the right. One, two, three, four. Notice we're going to open up some zeros here, right? So we're going to end up with 24,000, and these are now deciliters. DL. Right, so it's that easy. Um, figure out how many times and what direction you have to go to get from the units you have to the units you want, and then do the same thing with the decimal place. All right, same page number two. This time we have 240 centigrams, and we want to go to decagrams. So centigrams is over here at centi, and decagrams over here at deca da. So um, we're gonna have to go one, two, three times to the left. So in our 240 centigrams, right now the decimal place is right over here. We're going to move it three times to the left, so it's going to go one, two, three times to the left. So it'll be 0 0.24, and these will now be decagrams, or D-A-G. Subtle point there, by the way. Um, decagrams, when you uh, abbreviate, all of them are pretty straightforward. Kilograms is kg, hectograms is hg, but because deci and deca both start with d, if you see DG, it just means decigram, decigram. If you see DAG, that means decagram. So keep in mind the difference between deci and deca in the abbreviation. Deca is DA, deci is just D. Um, okay, one more of these, number three, uh, 28 decimeters to millimeters. We're over here at deci, and we just want to go over here to milli. So one, two to the right. We have 28. Our decimal place is right there to start, and we're going to move it two times to the right. It's going to open up two more zeros, so we're going to get 2,800, and these will now be millimeters, or mm. And there you go. Um, the only other type of problem with um, just pure metric system is uh, a problem like this on page 45, number 17. They'll tell you an item, like in this case it's a volume of small juice glass and you have to decide which is the most appropriate measurement. Um, some of the ones in the book are actually pretty difficult to tell sometimes. You've got to really know your, your measurements. Um, but the ones in the homework, I think, are a little bit more obvious. Keep in mind, too, um, sometimes it'll say, pick the most appropriate metric uh, measurement. Well, if they give you something like pounds, pounds aren't metric measurements, so automatically it's not that one. So um, on this one here on 17, they're only giving us metric choices. So. We have a small juice of glass, uh, 2.5 liters is obviously the one that stands out as wrong because think about a 2 liter of soda, it's pretty big, this is even bigger than that, and it wouldn't be a small juice glass. Um, milliliters, so it's tough between 125 milliliters and 500 milliliters in this case. The only way I'd think of it is, again, if you go back to your, your uh, 2 liter soda, you probably have seen a 1 liter soda, it's half of that. And then half of that, half of a liter, is 500 milliliters. So B is probably a little bit too big. We're going to go with A, 125. But again, um, 
it will be a lot, even those two choices, a lot of people would choose B, just, um, you know, it's hard to just visualize these, these sizes. The ones in the homework are a little bit more forgiving, but um, you can always Google it too and think about, um, you know, how many milliliters is in um, an ounce or something like that too. And that can maybe give you, if you know your ounces pretty well, then that could maybe give you an idea. Uh, but there's only a couple of those, and it's good to kind of think about these things in, uh, in different, um, different units. Okay, so now we're jumping out of the metric system, or actually more accurately, we're jumping between the metric system and the U.S. system. So on page uh, 45, number 28, they want us to convert 47 pounds to kilograms. So pounds are U.S. system units, kilograms are metric system units. You can't just do the nice move the decimal thing. Um, we're going to have to do just an, an old-fashioned conversion. And the way I recommend we do that is um, first figure out the way you're going to convert it. Like what, what's your conversion rate? So I know that one kilogram is equal to 2.2 .2 pounds. The good news about that is uh, you will not have to memorize that. These values will be given to you. So will that um, the metric system with the prefixes from kilo all the way down to milli. Um, that will also be given to you. So you don't have to memorize any of these conversions. You just have to know how to use them. So if I want 47 pounds to kilograms, I'm going to start with the conversion rate between kilograms and pounds, which I just wrote down for you there. Now the next thing you do is you take what you have. We have 47 pounds. So I'm going to write 47 pounds. I'm going to put it over 1. And the reason is we're going to multiply by a fraction. And that fraction is going to consist of our one kilogram and our 2.2 .2 pounds. And the only trick here, which one goes on top and bottom? The trick is if you start with pounds, you have to have pounds down at the bottom because the whole point of this is to cross cancel those units. So I know that the 2.2 .2 pounds has to go down here, the one kilogram goes up here because what happens next is pounds on top, pounds on bottom, those cancel out, they cross cancel just like you would do with regular fraction multiplication. And then what we're left with is just kilograms on top. So basically this comes down to those units cancel out. We just have 47 times 1 on top, which is 47. We have 1 times 2.2 .2 on bottom, which is 2.2. .2. And these are now kilograms because our pounds canceled out and we're left with kilograms on top. Obviously the last thing to do is to throw that in your, in your calculator. It comes out to about uh, 21.36 kilograms. Right, so this is how we do regular conversions outside the metric system. We start with our conversion rate. Um, this is our conversion rate between kilograms and pounds. Start with what you have, put it over 1, so 47 pounds over 1, that's what we started with, right? And then we use our conversion rate as a fraction, and the way you figure out which one goes on top or bottom, whatever units you started with, those have to go on bottom because they have to cross-cancel. And then you do with that whatever arithmetic you have left. We have basically multiplying fractions straight across on top, 47, straight across on bottom, 2.2, divide that, and you get your answer. Um, same idea here. Um, the only problem is we can't go directly from gallons to liters. If you, um, There will be like tables given to you of conversions, but still there won't be a conversion directly from gallons to liters. So you have to find a path from gallons to liters. Well, one way you could do it is you can convert from gallons to quarts, and then from quarts to liters. And again, you'll, you'll have to look at the conversion rates you're given and figure out, okay, what do I have? How can I get there? And sometimes you might get slightly different answers uh, depending on which, which path you choose. Basically because like conversions like this, you know, one quart equals 0.9464 liters, there's some error there. And depending on which conversion you make, um, you might introduce a different amount of error. So keep that in mind, but basically you're going you're gonna to pick a path, you're going to map it out, and then you're going to write down all the conversions that you need for it. So our path here is going to be um, gallons to quarts, and then we'll con convert from quarts to liters. All right, and we're going to use these um, conversion rates that I already wrote up here. All right, so we're going to start it off like the last one. We're going to take 27 gallons, put it on top, over 1. And we're going to start with our first conversion rate, which is going to convert us um, from gallons to quarts. So we're going to need the um, conversion rate between quarts and gallons. Four quarts equals one gallon. Which one goes on top and bottom? Well, since there's gallons on top, we have to have the one gallon on bottom. So we're going to have one gallon, which is equal to four quarts. Alright, so that conversion right there will take us to quarts, but let's go ahead and add on the last one. 
because we know what's going to happen here, right? Our gallons are going to cross cancel. We're left with quarts. Now our job is to convert from quarts to liters. Well, we have our conversion rate. One quart equals 0.9464 liters. And we have quarts on top, so that means we need quarts on bottom again. So I'll put the one quart and the 0.9464 liters. All right, and then you can see our quarts are going to cross cancel. And after all of this, we started with gallons, but they canceled. Then we got quarts, they canceled. We are left with liters, which was our goal, right? Gallons to liters. So all together, um, we're just going to have, if you, if you look at our numerators, it's 27 times 4 times 0.9464. The bottom was just all 1, so it's just whatever we get on the top. So if you multiply these uh, three numbers together, uh, let's see, you should get about... Which one is this? Sorry, 102 and some change. So I'll just take four decimals just because that's what we had in the conversion rate. Um, 102.1, or sorry, 2. Sorry, sorry, sorry. 2, 1, 1, 2. There we go. And these are liters. Um, it didn't specify what around to. My math labs will. But since we had four decimals in our conversion rate here, I just decided to put four in there. But you'll get the idea, right? So the whole point of this problem is to show you that sometimes you have to make multiple conversions but that you can make them all together in one big big long fraction right if we needed to convert from liters to something else we could do another times and then just put the conversion right there make sure liters would be on bottom for the next one because you always want them to cross cancel um, okay the last one here we're converting 10,000 milliliters to quarts so again this is one of those examples where um, you won't have a direct conversion between milliliters and quarts, so you're going to have to find a path. Um, if you look at the, the tables you're given, you'll probably have one from liters to quarts. So we have milliliters. We should be able to go from milliliters to liters pretty easily just using the metric system, right? So we can actually do our metric, metric system conversion from milliliters to liters, then go from liters to quarts using our, our fraction thing. So let me show you that first part. Uh, milliliters to liters. Um, I should have pasted that in here, but there's uh, liters, um, deciliters, centiliters, oops, and then milliliters. Right, so um, I'm just writing this out because I don't have the full table here, but we want to convert from milliliters to liters. So we're over here at milli, and we want to go over here to liter. So that means we're going to have to go one, two, three left. Right, so that's the first part. Three left, we had 10,000 decimal place right there. You move it one, two, three to the left, and you get 10. And these are now 10 liters. Right, so that first conversion, we just converted from milliliters, 10,000 milliliters to liters, and we didn't have to use any of the fraction stuff because we're just inside the metric system. Now, though, um, we are going to convert from liters to quarts. So we have 10 liters now. Put it over one and we're going to multiply it by the um, fraction with uh, liters to quarts. Does that just say... Oh, I see. This is supposed to say one liter. There we go. <laughs> one liter equals 1.0567 quarts. So, down here, we just need to make sure that since we have liters on top, we need liters on bottom. So it'll be one liter on bottom. And on top, it'll be 1.0567 quarts just like that. And so now you can see our liters will cross cancel and our answer will just be 10 times 1.0567 which will just give us 10.567 and these are now quarts. And that's it. So hopefully um, you find this section pretty easily. Um, definitely converting inside the metric system should be a breeze if you have that um, that chart of all the prefixes which like I said will be given to you. Um, all of these conversion rates that we use here will be given to you. Um, so your job is just to, to find them, use them, um, know when to use them and for problems like this it's kind of pick a path um, because you don't want to panic when you go to the, uh, the, the formulas and you realize there isn't something for milliliters to quarts. Instead you just think okay is there something like milliliters? Well yeah there's liters to quarts. So if I can go from milliliters to liters then I can go from liters to quarts. Right, so find a path, write down your, um, your conversions, and then go for it. So that's it. Uh, let me know if you have any questions. Keep up all the good work.